Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to each and every one of you. Welcome in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Today in our worship, God's Word speaks to us about the, the amazing blessings that God gives to us in our lives and how so often the, the very sinful nature that we have within us gets in the way of our Christian living and our appreciation of all of the blessings that God gives to us. And that's why God calls us to, to war against our sinful nature. That's, that's a strong word, to, to war against our, our sinful nature. But that's, uh, that's what's necessary, and uh, uh, that's what our God instructs us to do. So let's begin our worship today with our opening hymn. It's hymn 226, To Your Temple I Draw Near. Uh, so God be with you today and bless you as, as we worship Him. God, 
our Heavenly Father has forgiven all of your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, He has removed your guilt forever. You are His own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to His will. Amen. In the peace of this forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Make every effort to live in peace with all men, 
and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one misses the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See that no one is sexually immoral, or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. He could bring about no change of mind, though he sought the blessing with tears. This is the word of our Lord. Let's continue now with the singing of the verse of the day in song. You find this uh, on the middle of page two of this morning's book.
The Bible passage that I just read said, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And he says, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. What is it that weighs us down as we're trying to run the race of our lives and our Christian faith in following Jesus? What is it that always gets in the way? Makes us weighed down. Makes us stumble and fall. That's the sin that we have, right? And, and as I said before, we, we, all, we all have this sinful nature within us. And it's going to be there as long as we live in this world, this sinful nature. And what's going on between the, the faith side of us and the sinful nature side of us. What's going on inside of us? There's always a, a fight going on, isn't there? There's always this war going on between the faith side of us and the sin side of us, the sinful nature. Well, which one wins? Which one wins? You know, let me tell you a story. A uh, story of a guy who had two dogs. Black one and a white one. And uh, you aren't supposed to do this because it's mean to animals. But, the, but, but he would have those dogs fight and see which one would win. You should, like I say, you shouldn't do that. That's mean to animals. But, but sometimes the white one would win and sometimes the black one would win. And people would sometimes make bets on, on which one was going to win. But see, this guy that owned them always knew which one it was going to be. And somebody asked him one time, so how, how do you know which one is going to win? And he said, the one that I feed. See, the one that he would feed and give food to would be strong and ready for the fight, and the one that he didn't feed would be weak because it didn't have much food lately. So uh, which side of us wins the battle? Is it the sin side of us? Or the faith side of us. It depends which one we feed, right? And how do we feed our faith? How do we feed our faith? Just like we need to feed our bodies regularly, we need to feed our faith too. And what do we feed it with? That's why we need to keep hearing his word, because that's what God uses to strengthen our faith. Well, why don't we bow our heads in prayer? Lord Jesus, our Savior, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the forgiveness that you won for us at the cross uh, by laying down your life there and, and paying for all of our sins. Lord, we thank you for the strength you give us in your holy word. Lord, help us always to listen to that word and to take it to heart and to live that word. We pray this all in your name. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming up. We'll let you go back to your seats then, okay? You going to stay up here with me? Okay. stand for our gospel lesson. <coughs> the Holy Gospel is recorded for us in Mark. This is Mark chapter 7, uh, starting here at verse 14. Here, Jesus teaches us that, that living for the Lord isn't about outward things. It isn't about outward ceremonies. It's a matter of the heart. And uh, he, he teaches us then to, that, that we should live in, in constant repentance and faith in the Lord as the Lord daily forgives us. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone. 
And understand this, nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull, he asked, don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach, and then out of his body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. This is the word of Solomon.
recorded for us in Hebrews chapter 12. Listen again to the opening couple of verses here. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. This is the word of our Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, the one who has redeemed us and made us his own fellow people of God. One of the most important ingredients in having a successful team is having competent coaches who coach well. I think that's pretty much true in the sports world, I think it's true in the business world, and it's pretty much true uh, all, all throughout life. How, how important it is to have, have competent coaches. Now, I know that the, the state high school track meet has been passed for quite a number of weeks already, but I, I cannot help but, but look here at Hebrews chapter 12 without thinking about a, a track meet, because that's the imagery that, that the, the writer to the Hebrews is using here. A track meet. Now, all, all of our children, uh, when they were in high school or even in grade school, they, they ran in track, but it became very obvious quite early on that, that none of them inherited the, the sprinter gene from me, or from my wife either, I don't think. So uh, they were usually involved in the longer distance kinds of, of races, like the, the mile or the two mile, half mile, or something. That. And it was always interesting to me, especially early on in the season, uh, to look at how those races started and to, to look at, at how good coaching was so important there. Because especially early on in the season, at the start of, say, a, a mile race or two-mile race, uh, there was usually somebody, probably some inexperienced runners, who would start that mile race and they would just take off like a shot, like they were running a 50-yard dash. And they would just run as fast as they could uh, from, from the, the firing of the gun. And of course, nobody can keep that up for a mile or two miles, so, you know, and pretty soon they would fade, or fade out and probably not even complete the race. But, but you could usually hear the coaches saying, Run your race. And the, those who were probably the, the coached the, the, the best knew that it was important that they, they find their pace early on and that, that they not just start off running as fast as they can because they could not possibly sustain that for, for that kind of a distance. But the coaches were saying, run your race. And in essence, that's what we have before us in the Word of God today. Because in a, in a very genuine way, we can say that, that the writers of Holy Scripture are like coaches for us in our Christian life. And God the Holy Spirit, the one who inspired all of the writers of Holy Scripture to write, is like the coach for our spiritual life, for that spiritual race in life. And so God, in essence, God the Holy Spirit is saying that very thing, run your race, run your race to your heavenly goal. And here especially we want to notice two things. First of all, it's the instruction to, to run our race knowing the pitfalls that are out there. And it's no secret that, that the devil wants nothing more than to, to get us to stumble in our race of faith and our race of Christian life. The, the devil wants nothing more than to, to get us to say, oh, that's just too hard. 
I think we'll just give up. But that's why the writer to the Hebrews says what he does here earlier on in the chapter. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. We know that the, the devil and his demon armies are going to be attacking us, trying to get us off track, trying to get us to give up. And we also know that there's another great enemy, one that's inside of us. That's our sinful nature. The, the sinful nature that the Apostle Paul describes in Romans chapter 7 as, as this, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin. So we, every Christian needs to recognize that, that we are always contending as we are running our race of faith and life. We are always contending with the, the sinful nature within us that, that wants to get us to quit and, and to just go along and just blend in with the sinful world around us. And the Bible is, is full of examples of how, how that sinful nature is so often so very powerful. You might think of, of David, King David in the Old Testament. Went from being the, the shepherd boy to being the king of Israel. And in Israel at the time of, of probably its greatest power, greatest extent of its boundaries. Uh, he became the king and and probably because of the sinful nature within him and, and the, the temptation to, to pride and to, to puff himself up and think he was so great, apparently thought that he could do just about anything he wanted to do. And when he saw Bathsheba nearby, he was inflamed with lust for her and and that sin of lust moved on over into committing adultery with her. And those sins kept piling up and the, the stone kept rolling down the hill and, and he tried to cover it up and with all kinds of intrigue and lies. And, and, and finally he wound up murdering Bathsheba's husband all to try to, to, to cover up this, this trail of sinfulness that his sinful nature within him had brought about. And, and it took God sending his special prophet to King David to confront him with his sin and to call him to repentance before, before he, he acknowledged that sin finally, after probably quite some time. Another example is one that, that we have, uh, the writer to the Hebrews makes reference here. Uh, he makes reference to Esau. Remember Esau? Twin brother of Jacob. Both, both the, the sons of Isaac and Rebekah. And the writer to the Hebrews says, See to it that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. So he talks here about, about sexual immorality. He talks here about, about godlessness. Or, or that, that word has the, the thought of being worldly. Having, having really no concern for the Lord and the Lord's will for his life. Uh, he just wanted to go his own way and do his own thing. And, and this account is, is recorded for us in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 25. And it was an incident when, when Esau came in from the field and he was just ravenously hungry. And uh, his, his brother Jacob had a, a pot of stew on the stove and, and, and Esau was willing to trade his his right of, of the birthright, the, the, the right of the firstborn son to trade it for a meal. And remember that the, that the inheritance rights here had to do also not just with inheriting things, it was that most important promise of God of all, of the, the coming of the Savior that was going to come from this family line. That went together with this this inheritance, right? And Esau 
Esau thought so much of the here and now and the hunger in his stomach that, that he was willing to, to trade that, to trade that birthright for a single meal. That, that's how worldly he was. That's how little he thought of the, the special blessings of God. That's how sin works. That's how the sinful nature within us so often tries to, to get us off track of following the path that, that God himself has for us, that path of faith, that path of Christian living in our lives. And that's why... Right before the verses in, in our text here, the writer to the Hebrews talks about God's discipline. Because God disciplines us. In fact, he says here, and he quotes from an Old Testament passage, the Lord disciplines those he loves. See, the, the Lord loves us so much that he, he doesn't want us to get off track. He doesn't want us to stumble in our faith. He doesn't want us to give up on that, that race of Christian faith and life, which is so easy for us to want to do, especially when, when things get difficult, when things are challenging. And certainly they were for the, the, the people that the writer to the Hebrews originally was writing this for. They were facing persecution. They were facing opposition because of their Christian faith. But he urges them to continue on. He urges them to run their race. Run, run your race well aware of those pitfalls and those temptations and those things that, that might try to, try to sidetrack us off of the path that God has for us, away from that race of life and race of faith. So he says, run your race mindful of those pitfalls, but he also says run your race powered by God's grace. Because the scriptures tell us that if anyone is in Christ, we are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. And so God's word tells us here, See to it that no one misses the grace of God. And that's a powerful word that he uses here. That he says, see to it. And, and it really has the picture of, uh, of someone watching over somebody else, like, like a, a doctor or a nurse perhaps in the hospital, uh, who is watching over one individual who maybe is injured or is ill. And they just focus all of their attention on that person in need. He says, see to it that no one misses the grace of God. The grace of God. That, that's where the power is. That's where the power is for us to, to persevere in our faith. And to persevere in this, this race of Christian faith. That's the power of for us to stay on track with being in tune with the word and the will of God. It's in the message of God's grace. It's in that, that good news message of, of God's faithfulness and love to us. That moved him to send his one and only son. Who willingly went to the cross to pay for our sins and the sins of all of the world. And he reminds us, that is where the power is. The power is there in the message of the gospel. So he urges us, don't give up. Don't say, this is too hard following the, the path that the Lord lays out for us and, and running the race that God has for us. He says, don't give up. He says, strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. He says, make every effort, and that, that picture there is, is pursuing something, hunting after it, uh, pursuing peace and holiness. 
but, but it's not our holiness. It's the holiness God gives us through faith in Jesus. And he says, see to it that no one misses the grace of God. He's <coughs> telling us to run our race. And we need to listen to the voice of our spiritual coach that says, run your race with perseverance and throw off those things, those sins that so easily entangle to fix our eyes on Jesus, he says, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. So run your race. Run your race to the heavenly goal, empowered with that power source that only God can give in his gospel. The gospel in the word, the gospel in the sacraments, that's the strength that God gives to us. So may the Lord continue to bless us through his Holy Spirit so that we might fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you would open your hymnals now to page 41, let's join together in confessing our Christian faith as we speak together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated once again as we now worship our Lord with our offerings. against the, the sinful nature within our own hearts. 
and against all of the temptations of the devil in this sinful world. Lord, strengthen us by the power of your gospel so that we persevere in our faith, so that we do not give up, but continue on and continue to live our lives for you, proclaiming that precious saving gospel message. And Lord, confident of your mercies, we also bring you our special prayers. Lord, we pray for those who are dealing with medical issues. We ask for your blessings on Mr. Ron Schmidt, Mrs. Velois Danicus, who was hospitalized following surgery, and also Mr. Charlie Zeck, who will soon be undergoing cancer treatments. Lord, we ask that you would watch over these servants of yours with your loving care and with your gracious love. Lord, be with uh, those who, uh, who are treating their medical conditions and giving therapies. We ask, Lord, that according to your wisdom and will, that you would grant healing and recovery. Lord, we ask especially, though, that you would strengthen their trust and their confidence in you and your gracious promises. And Lord, today we also bring our prayers of thanksgiving and praise with our brothers and sisters in our sister synod, the Evangelical Lutheran Synod, uh, which is celebrating their centennial this year, their 100th anniversary. Lord, we thank you for, for keeping them faithful to your word and preserving your gospel message among them as well. We ask, Lord, for your blessings upon uh, these fellow Christians in the future as, as they continue on with their race of faith and life. Lord, may they boldly proclaim your gospel message. And Lord, we also ask for your blessings on those uh, who are considering calls in our area and to our area, particularly Pastor Brian Peckman uh, from Georgia, who is considering the call to serve in the new mission start in Brandon, and also Pastor Jason Enderley of uh, Wisconsin, as he's considering the call to serve at Millbank and Mazeppa Township. Lord, we ask that you would guide their thoughts and their discussions and their decisions that it truly might be according to your will. Lord, we gather these and all of our prayers before you in your holy name, and we also join together in the prayer which you yourself have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Please be seated for our next hymn. It is hymn 464, Jesus Christ, my pride and glory. Let's sing the first three stanzas in 464.
Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.